Great. So my name is Sing Ho Moon. I'm a faculty member at Oklahoma State University. So I, as a faculty member, there is lots of pressure to get funding, external funding for tenureship. So I thought about how to incorporate art to think about active citizenship and community. And this initiative, I named it as the Art Initiative. So aesthetic, reflexive thoughts, and sharing. And this is a nine-week after-school program to enrich existing learning communities with an emphasis on art-based inquiry and the aesthetic experience. So I have two schools in some inner city setting in Oklahoma. And we talked about the meaning of active citizenship and community with the use of art. So I mentioned three art genres of poetry, clay art, and dance. So I was wondering how children <laughs> fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, they conceptualize what it means by citizenship and community. And what is the role of art within this discussion? And what possibilities exist, this collaboration among professors, teaching artists, and classroom teachers? So I was fortunate to know Maxine Green's scholarship uh, when I studied my doctoral degree at Columbia University. And recently, I interviewed her, you know, Maxine Green, what is your definition of community and active citizenship? Because she talks about imagination and to look at things as if they could be otherwise all the time, right? So she says, community is being together and opening to spaces. Students like the ideas of openings if they look beyond the closed space. And also, when she talks about citizenship, each one and individual are not exactly like the other one. The people with different individuality are different ends, and there is an in-between. I think the in-between is that space that we have to keep our eyes on, citizenship. Dewey talks about comes out of relationship. So I was wondering, children have many ideas about citizenship and community, but I want to focus on Maxine Green's concept of this in-between space, drawing from uh, phenomenological existentialism. But I have uh, some difficulty with, I'm more influenced by post-structuralist feminist theories, and I try to make a connection between Maxine's suggestion of this in-between spaces and how feminist post-structuralist thinkers, they provide the meaning of in-between spaces. So again, this is, uh, nine-week program we met twice a week for an hour and during the first semester I worked with a school the free and reduced lunch rate is 98 percent but that community is quite interesting because 48 uh, percent of the population is white and the rest of them are pretty much uh, Latino and Native American community and the second school that I worked with uh, this semester, it's pretty much Latino, Latina community and 100% free lunch and reduced lunch community. So anyway, we had transcribed video and audio and interviews with teachers and artists and students and student artifacts. This is my ongoing project and this is in the process. I want to give you some snip, just a little bit of this project. So I can share some of the representatives of active citizenship in community. And during the poetry process, we talked about how to represent your ideas about community and active citizenship with the use of metaphor and a uh, simile. So there were lots of ideas of, you know, active citizenship is a medicine, a party, a tree, a web, a puzzle, a rainbow, a moon ring, a flower. So I could see children's imagination of how do they envision their concept of a community and active citizenship. So this is an example of how fifth grader tried to conceptualize active citizenship. She said, active citizenship is nutrition, giving the community a vitamin daily, being able to keep it healthy and clean like a nurse. Active citizenship is a dog, a friend for the community. It will allow you to ask it for love with a friendly trick. It's a random act, but it's sweet as a cupcake, adding new frosting for each batch. 
Active citizenship is a leaf. It always stays with the tree. Once windows blow away, a new leaf blooms like a flower in new spring. Active citizenship is a bed being made every day. We change streets every day to keep us warm and cozy, to always keep us warm and night. And this is another example of one fifth grader talks about you know, active citizenship is an awesome party. <laughs> it is awesome, isn't it? Because of time, I skip it. And we also have an activity of generating group poetry out of each individual's ideas. And actually, this group poetry idea was generated from one of the students. You know, she said, well, what if we generate group poetry? It would be fun. And they presented it as a group. So active citizenship is having a one-on-one -on -one feeling for one or another. Someone you care about. It is to take care of someone important. It's recycling. Active citizenship. A community protector. And I try to show video clip, but I just skipped it for time purpose. And the second component of this project was how to use clay art to represent what it means by active citizenship and community. And clay artist has a great idea of providing wind chimes. So they made wind chimes to think about it. And also there was uh, the right slide, kids made pinch pod, right? So usually in art education, we teach how to make pinch pod well, right? Some artistic skills. But this project, I focused on how to share your ideas, influenced by Maxine Green's philosophy of aesthetic education. And the third component was, you know, dancing. And you know, dancing itself is a metaphor, right? So I don't think I can play it. Oh, I can see that. Actually, this is not a random choreography. At the very beginning, we try to introduce some movement and ask them, if you present yourself, what kind of movement do you want to use, right? So each movement has a meaning of, okay, this is who I am. And then we have the time to collaborate how to organize each individual's ideas, identity as a group. So this is some combination of as an individual who you are, and as a group who we are. So there was another issue. And this is another example of how they represent their idea of community. So can you get some sense of each motion has some kind of meaning, you know, dividing, embracing, sharing. So at the end of the one school, I talked about some interviews and some surveys and what did you learn, you know, during this after school program. They were, you know, elementary school kids and they talked about it's cool to be a good citizenship, right, good citizen, too respectful to people you do not like. And I asked, what was the most important part of this project? Why do you think so? And all of it, you know, it, teaches, it teaches us love and clay. It lets you express your creativity. So this is somewhat conventional ways of understanding citizenship and community. But I tried to find some counter narratives, how to think about citizenship and community somewhat different way. So it, brought me an issue of in-between spaces during the project. So we are living in a very dichotomous world to divide leader, follower, right? If you are principal in school, you are the leader. If you are teachers, you should be followers within the standardization movement and safe, unsafe issue, private, public space, 
researcher research within this university school partnership. You know, I'm supposed to be a researcher, right, as a university professor, and then children should be researched and teachers should be researched. But I tried to dismantle this binary and regular and after school program. So this is exactly the same activity that we did and you shared you know, the meaning of it. So after doing this mini activity, we shared some of the ideas. Ms. Ari was a dancer and she said, the leaders, did you guys notice if you move too fast, then the person who's following steps behind? And Ms. Portman was a classroom teacher and they told us there's no leader. So that was a very important moment to analyze it. And the dancer said, well, you do get to the point. And Ms. Portman, she was borrowing her students' you know, comment. It is hysterical because the point is that we learn together where we are going. It's actually really fun to do that way. If you ever want to get to that point, try it sometime with some music. It's actually a lot of fun where you stand and no one is leading. You do it as a group. You feel like you're connecting with the person standing in front of you. And the dancer interpreted it like, I see you guys. Did you hear what Ms. Portman says? When you really get to this, get to do this, and you're really doing it correctly, and the signal is so clear, there's no leader anymore. You give up control to be part of a group. That's why this is part of active citizenship. When it works really well, you can't tell who the leader is because if the follower doesn't follow, the leader stops leading. And then the leader starts following the person. So that's closely related with, you know, we are living in you know, this economist world of you, know, you should be a leader and I should be a follower. But we have a chance to think about the problems within this binary of leader follower with doing this activity. And also there was a huge issue of safe and unsafe issue. And there are there are lots of evacuations or some kind of shooting related issues and they live within that community. So usually when you imagine community, you think of us a romantic humanistic version of let's create great community, right? And some of the representations of students' work, they talk about when a community as a nutrition, community as an awesome party. So we began this conversation from classroom teacher, what is the definition of community to you? And they begin talking about something very positive ways of, well, it's you know coming together and making a big town and it's a safe place. And then one student mentioned that, what if your community is not safe? That was the beginning moment of talking about unsafety issues in your community. Right? And also the third one I try to emphasize is a private and public economy. Usually think, we think that in education is a public space. But for me, my struggle was community and active citizenship, that is a very abstract concept. And how to connect that with their personal lives. And during our clay art, there was a chance to glaze individual cup. And there was a Wes, and during the presentation of why did you draw, why did you glaze your cup this way? And Wes said, I did dark blue because my dog Charlie passed away. Right, so I just, you know, okay, it's good, and I moved on, but I witnessed that he was crying in the middle of the discussion, and I could not ignore it. And he talked about, you know, Wes was you know, sobbing, and I asked him, as a community, what can we do? And there were lots of conversations of their personal stories, and also how to protect our communities safer, and then how to relate this issue of active citizenship as your personal story. So that's why I tried to dismantle this public, pri private dynamic, uh, economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a still ongoing process, but I still want to revisit in between spaces in considering community and active citizenship and how do educators challenge normalized understanding of underprivileged or leaders, for example. I have several pre-service educators and they say, 
I do not want to go to bad school for bad students. So they mean by under-resourced communities, right? So when people are thinking this dichotomous way, how we can challenge these ways of thinking, right? So this is one of my discussion questions. And then the power of art in imagining different community and how to encounter with safety and violence issues that are urgent to children. And the third one, I try to blur the genres of researcher and research in this university school partnership, and then the meaning of community without consensus in current education, and education that pursues normalized curriculum and assessment. I want to end my presentation by quoting Janet Miller's definitions of community without consensus. In her book chapter, Janet Miller indicates, quote, a notion of community without consensus possibly enables representations of self, other, and the curriculum field to be unfixed, mobilized, destabilized, and released as forces capable of recombining in as yet unimagined and perhaps untraceable ways. So this is why I try to combine the notion of this public space and private space not as a dichotomous space, but something open-ended space to discuss what is the real meaning of active citizenship and community with kids, with the use of art. So thank you so much for listening to my presentation. And uh, I hope that we have a time for discussion. Can we have a brief discussion?